In today's True Crime and Tutorial Tuesday video, I'm talking about Melanie Road whilst doing my makeup. So keep on watching to hear about her murder and see me create this makeup look. Melanie Ann Road was born on the 29th of September 1966 in Solihull, West Midlands, England. She was a bright, vivacious 17 year old who made friends easily. She was deputy head girl of her school and played for the hockey team. She lived with her parents in Bath, one of England's safest cities. On the 8th of June 1984, Melanie was on a night out with her friends at the city's Bew Nash nightclub. She drank and danced until the club shut at 2am, sending her spilling out onto the street with hundreds of other clubgoers. Her boyfriend, along with his brother who was visiting from Greece, was there with her. After a short discussion, she told him she would walk home as she had done many times before. He offered to get a taxi for her, but her mind was made up. They had not had an argument and it was common for Melanie to walk home after a night out. It was a route she'd walked many times and knew very well indeed. So no one was concerned when she walked off into the night. She set off from the nightclub in Kingston Road, heading for the famous Prutney Bridge and to Lansdowne beyond where she lived with her parents in St Stephen's Close. It was about a half an hour walk. No one saw her after that until her body was found at 11am the next morning by a milkman's boy. She had been stabbed 26 times, several of those in her breasts and sexually assaulted. When her body was discovered, it apparently lay in a pool of blood. A 30 metre long blood trail led from St Stephen's Road to where the body was found, which was only yards from her home. Police had found a wooden key ring nearby with the name Melanie on it and in the police car with a loud hailer had gone around the nearby streets calling her name. Her mother had heard this and went out to the police car informing them that her daughter was called Melanie and she had not returned home. The senior investigating officer was summoned by radio and he broke the news to her stunned parents. Avon and Somerset police launched a murder investigation and later that day they would try to work out the route she took. In 1984 however there was no CCT in Bath and no one had mobile phones to provide police with details of their movements. The investigation therefore had to proceed with no clear route available for Melanie which would hinder the hunt for witnesses. Nevertheless, police identified three men they wanted to speak to. A man seen riding a bicycle on St Stephen's Road, a man seen sitting on a church wall and another man seen loitering near the crime scene. Police were ultimately unable to locate these three men in an investigation that lasted for 32 years. However, the killer had left a trail of blood spots from the crime scene out to nearby St Stephen's Road. This blood was found to be of a rare type and police set out trying to identify all men in Bath with this type. DNA analysis was also not available in 1984. Soon all leads and sources of information would run dry. The investigation had run into a brick wall after 94 arrests and not a single charge. Although it was never dropped, the investigation was part in more than 35,000 pieces of evidence put in storage at the Traffic Police Headquarters in Western Supermare. In 2009, on the 25th anniversary of Melanie's death, a crime watch special is shown and 70 names are handed to the police. Police revisit every bit of evidence gathered at the time by transferring 14,339 index cards, one for each person interviewed, named, arrested, etc., onto computers. In 2010, police get funding for a £20,000 nationwide familial run. They compare DNA from the scene with people on the database for family member matches. It produces the top 400 most likely relatives of the killer who are all tracked down to see if they have male relatives, which match the estimated age of the killer. The male relatives are DNA swabbed in the following years. In 2014, 30 years after the murder, a cold case review was launched with DCI Julie McKay in charge, a police officer who 30 years before had been an enthusiastic Bath nightclub customer. Several other officers who worked on the original inquiry were also brought out of retirement. 
Their first task was to scour the traffic police storage unit in Weston, which was in a large, uncatalogued warehouse. By April 2014, the police had located these blood samples and sent them off for analysis. They were then able to announce they had a full DNA profile of the suspect, with which they could search the national database. Then, in July 2015, the call finally came. Police in Bristol had arrested a woman on a completely unrelated matter, but her DNA came back with a partial match to that found at the crime scene. This was very exciting news to say the least, and the police demanded her entire family volunteer samples of their DNA, and that taken from her father, Christopher John Hampton, was found to be a perfect match. He was arrested on the 3rd of July 2015 and charged the next day. His first court appearance was on the 9th of July 2015 when his trial was set for the 9th of March 2016. He appeared again in December 2015 to enter a plea and he pled not guilty to Melanie's murder. By the time they came case to court in March, he decided to plead guilty. No one knows what changed his mind. Indeed, Julie McKay has said she's never spoken to him about the murder and he has never to this day talked about it or explained his actions. In an interview with Melanie's mother, then 81 Jean Road said, I always said if I met the man who killed Melanie, I'd strangled him or stick a knife in him. But I don't have the energy for that. I just want him to rot in hell. Christopher was given a life sentence with a minimum of 22 years, as the judge told him he will most likely die behind bars. In January 2021, ITV News released a podcast on the murder and subsequent manhunt catching Melanie's killer. So guys, that is everything I have for this case, everything for today's video. I hope you guys have all enjoyed and I will see you all in the next one.